Okay, so now that we've got all of our data in a way that we can go ahead and sort it with that custom taxonomy, in this lesson, what we're gonna be doing is adding all of those fields that kind of define each individual classified post, and we're gonna be using advanced custom fields for that. And jumping back here onto our planning document, we can see that we're gonna be adding a contact name, contact email, contact phone, gallery, price, location, and status, so we know whether the items are still available or whether animals still lost or whatever the case might be. So let's go back to our Divi install here. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna go to custom fields. And of course, if you don't have ACF installed yet, you're not gonna see this. So make sure that ACF is installed and we're gonna go over to field groups. Now, when you don't have any field groups or any custom fields created yet, you'll be presented with the request to go ahead and start a field group. So you can create it. And it doesn't really matter what you call this. I'm just going to call mine Classifieds ACF, just so that I know what it's for. And it immediately jumps in and wants you to start adding custom fields. So why don't we do that? So when we jump back here to our document, and let me just hide my face, we're gonna see that we're gonna start with the contact name. So let's head back to this screen right here for ACF. And you can see that it wants three things from you. It's gonna want a label. It's gonna want a name, which is kind of like your slug for a field, and then the type of field that you're creating. Now you can click on the drop down here and you can see all of the types that are included with ACF. And then there's a few only available for pro, but we don't need that. So we are all good. Now for a name, we're probably just gonna be using a text field. So that's fine. And then we'll just say contact name. Okay, now you can see that it also generated the contact name field name here for you, which is very convenient. And you can also put a default value in your, if you wanted a default one to be assigned, but we're gonna be keeping this one clear. So with that set, we can close that field and we can go ahead and add our next field. And when we take a peek here, that's gonna be our contact email. So coming back over here, clicking on the field types, we have, of course, the email field type here, which we'll select. And then we will type in contact email as our label and then automatically contact email field name appears. And then you can put a default value again. We're not gonna be doing any of that. So go ahead and close that out. Oh, actually what I wanna show you also is just here you've got some validation options on whether this field is required or not. We're not gonna put that in. We can control some of this stuff when we're using the tools within WordPress to make sure that some required fields are in there if we do want them to be, and then this conditional logic and all that fun stuff, but we're not gonna mess with that here. We're gonna be using some of the built-in logic in the Vim machine. Cool. So with that one, we will go on and add another field. And next up is gonna be our contact phone number. So let's go ahead and select the phone number from the dropdown. And the field label will of course be contact phone and it'll generate that field name again for us. And then we can put in a default value. We can put in placeholder text here. You have a few more options as far as what you want there to happen. Um, we're not gonna be dealing with that since when we display our data, we can go ahead and use the, the V machine feature. So I'm gonna close that out and then we'll move on to the gallery. Now with the gallery, we need to take on a special approach because essentially, what is a gallery? It's a collection of images, so or a group of images, right? So we're gonna be adding another field and you'll see here that there is a special layout field called group. And within that group, you get a bunch of subfields. Now, if you guessed correctly, you're right. If you said image field, that's what we're gonna be adding is our subfields. Um, we're gonna be giving this group the name of gallery or label of gallery, and we'll generate our field name here. And we'll add our first subfield. And very easy, we're just gonna go ahead and select the image. And then the label that we'll just give them is image one. 
and array, all this stuff will just kind of stay the way that it is. So we'll just close our first subfield. Now, depending on how many images you want the user uh, to have the ability to add to each post, that's how many of these subfields for images you'll add. So I think we're gonna be comfortable with maybe three of them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add another image field. Call this one image two. It'll generate my label there or the uh, type label. Um, and then we'll just go ahead and do image. My goodness, there we go, image three. Close that one, and then we'll add our fourth and last one, image four. Great. Close that field. Cool. And then we just want to make sure that the layout at the bottom here is block. And you can look at some of the validation again. It's got those same things. Depending on the field type that you have selected, this validation stuff could change. We'll take a look at that in one of the fields we'll deal with in a minute. Cool. So. Let us take a look and see what is the X price. Exactly the field that I was thinking about. So here we go back and add yet another field. We are going to be selecting a range field, which is one of the basic ones. I had to look for that one there for a second. And we will just type in price because for our items that are going to be for sale, we want people to be able to put a price in there. Now, what the range field type does, in case you were curious, is it's just basically a slider that the user can drag. And I think that's a pretty convenient way for users to interact with our site. And yeah, that's really it. So now for the validation on this one, the default here is to give it a maximum value of 100, which, you know, that might be a little bit low for the items on our site. So we're going to put a default maximum value of 10 million. And I hope that's enough zeros. I think it is. Um, and then I'll just close the field here. You can put a minimum also, but of course you don't want a minimum on there. And then also you just want to make sure that there's no default value because we're going to be having some things that are free on the site also, and pets are going to be lost and stuff like that. And, you know, we don't want values in there. We want that to return null. So there we go. Price is in. Let's take a look at what's next. And let's move my head out of the way. It's gonna be the location, and we are gonna be using that location for the Google Maps integration with Divi Machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the field here. And the field type is gonna be Google Map, right down here under jQuery. And then we will just say location. There we go. And you can put in some defaults here. I'm not going to mess with any of that. Validation again is just the required. And that is that for location. It seems very easy, right? And it actually is quite easy because we will be utilizing some of the auto lookup features in the machine. And that is what's going to be placing those pins on our map um, that we see in the full site that we're building here. So last field is going to be the status and now this is that important one where we're going to be defining whether a for sale item has been sold where the lost item has been found etc cetera, etc cetera. so let's get back here and then what we'll be selecting for this field type is going to be the select box so let's come down and choice because they're going to have a choice so there is a choice and then we'll say status right so we've got status, it's gonna ask us, okay, well, what are the choices? Now you could just go ahead and put in a bunch of, you know, labels essentially in here, but it does give you the option to also give it a value. And we need that value to do some of the conditional logic on our posts. So let's go ahead and start from the top and we're just gonna start with lost. So lost is the value and then the label will be whatever words you decide there we'll do found for lost and found right so found well actually you know what i want to do here i forgot to add a space that's my bad and then we're going to go with free getting the space and then we're going to put gone because if it's not free it's going to be gone 
and then we'll put sale as this one for for sale and then lastly it's going to be sold so you should have what what is this one two three four five six of these values in here for the different status of the items super easy um, but can look a little confusing when you look at the different choices with that colon in the middle. So that is it. So we can just go ahead and close that. And then all we need to do with our seven fields in here, seven fields from here, we can go ahead and save this page. So let's save that up and let's take a quick look and see what happens on our classifieds page now. So, oh, one more thing, <laughs> and this is important. So let's actually go look at adding a new classified here. So here I've got a new classified, but hey, where are my custom fields? They're nowhere to be seen, right? You got to jump back here. And once you've saved all of your fields in here, you can go down to the rules section. Now it asks you what post type is this to be associated with? Of course, it's going to be classifieds. And you can have it be associated with multiple post types. It all depends on how you're setting your site up. Remember when we were planning out our site, I said you might have a different idea or a different vision of how all of this comes together. It's And there's no right or wrong way. It's all about doing the planning ahead of time so that you don't get to a crossroad like this. And you wonder, oh my goodness, you know what, what am I supposed to do here? or, oh, I forgot to do this other thing, um, and then you end up in trouble. So that's all we need to do there. I'm gonna resave this. And now on this page, I'm gonna refresh the new classified. And here you can see all of our beautiful ACF fields popping in. Here we've got our range slider working beautifully. So luckily with the range slider, you can go put in 500 if you felt like it. Google Maps, I need to put my key in there, which I'll do in a minute here, but that's it. That these are all of our fields. So now we've done all of our custom taxonomy work. We've planned out our custom post type. We've decided how we're going to be searching and adding new posts, and then all of the information we want on each of these posts. That was not that hard to do, but it can seem like an intimidating task if you've never done this before. Now, I hope that your brains are percolating a little bit on all the different possibilities when you're working with a Divi site or any website, really, when you're working and adding custom post types along with advanced custom fields, you can really create some highly bespoke websites for your clients and maybe just completely bust open the books on a whole new offering within your digital agencies. This stuff gets me really excited because I love working with this stuff. And every time we bring out a new feature and stuff like that, I just think about all the different things I could do if I was still working with clients. So in the next lesson, we're just going to be taking a look at adding some dummy data for our site. Um, this can be a laborious task, so stick with me. Um, but we do need that in there because after that, we're going to start getting to the custom loop layouts where we're going to want to see what our data is going to look like, how these different posts are going to be represented on the page. So stick with me. I'm going to catch you in the next lesson real soon.